you can see in the in the locals window uh, the count it's a variable type of integer and so so it's stored on the stack whereas SL is a reference type and it's stored in the heap and so you can't really see in this locals window where they're stored in memory you just see what their values are and so having the the knowledge that a class is a reference type and therefore it's stored on the on the heap and any variable type with, which are declared inside of inside of a reference type will also be stored on the on the heap and there'll be a pointer on the on the stack which will point to the value on the heap but a value type which is declared within this within this method specifically will be on the stack itself. So let's stop. Let's remove this breakpoint and let's close this down. And let's open our form. View the code. Let's go down to our form closing event. So I want to show you an example of values stored in a variable type, which are, as we know, stored on the on the stack. So let's create an integer. Let's call it x close equal one. Integer, let's call it y close. So we'll do y close equals x close. And then y close equals zero. Let's modify the file logger. Let's put plus x close dot to string. So what we expect to see here is a one. So let's put a breakpoint at the file logger so we can see and let's run it. And so we see that x close equals one and y close equals zero. And so whenever we open the file, the log file, we should see a one. So let's F5, it keeps running, then it'll close down. So let's go look at the application log file. And as expected, we see one. So let's open our logger class file. And let's create a new a new class. Let's call it public class check closed. Have a public integer closed value. Let's close this and save it. And let's comment out this information, these lines of code. And to show a reference type, let's do check closed equal new check closed ccx dot closed value equals one. Let's do another, let's create another class, ccy equals new, check closed. And let's say ccy equals ccx, and then ccy dot checked close value equals zero. And let's change this value, oops, to ccx dot close value dot to string. Before we run it, let's set another breakpoint right here so that we can step through and see what's happening. So what we expect to see, because we have ccx close value being being written to a log file, and we've set ccx close value to one, we we expect to see one, right? So let's run it. And close it. And now we see press F11 to step through. And we see 
Our class is created with a close value of 0. Changes it to 1. It's going to create our CCY. It's equal to 0. But we're going to set CCY equal to CCX. So now they're both 1. But now look what happens because now the 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 pointers are now point the pointers in the stack are now pointing to the same instance of this class on the heap and so whenever we change the CCY to zero they both go they both change to be zero so now when we go look at the application file we see zero instead of one which is not what we wanted. So now we're going to do an example about passing data by value or passing by reference. So let's comment this out. So let's create a, a little function in the form one. And we'll call it private. Return an int. Let's put check memory released and accept an int called value and within it it will set the value equal to one two three four five and then it will return the value just a quick little simple function so in our form closing event Let's create an integer called memory released. Let's set it equal to one. And then we'll call check memory released. And then we'll pass it memory released variable. Then let's modify our file logger delegate to add this memory released to the end so we can see what value it's going to be. And what do we expect? We, we expect it to be 1. So, so let's set a breakpoint. So let's run it. And close it. And so we'll see we have memory released, which is equal to 0. It's equal to 1 now. And here we've passed it there. Value of 1. It changes it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then it returns back to here where the, where the value is 1 and memory released remains 1 even when it's changed in an, in another function because the value of value is is changed in the function it's not changed in the memory release because there was a a memory released allocation on on the stack and there was a value allocation on the stack and they were both different and so therefore they they didn't change each other So let's go check in the application log. It should be 1 as expected. But now let's make two changes. Let's make the this function pass by reference. And whenever we call it, we're going to pass the memory we're released by reference instead of by value. So whenever we run it, So now it's, we see F11 to step through. It's equal to 1. We're going to pass by reference. So the value changes to 1, 2, 3. It's going to return it. And then look, the memory released is, is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's because we passed a pointer to the, to this, to, to the memory released variable instead of the, the, the variable itself. And so when we go look in the in the log file now, we'll see that it, that it wrote one, two, three, four, five. In conclusion, we talked about events, delegates, stack, and heap in C sharp. We reused what what we did in lesson six and all of its prerequisites. We created a log message delegate that logged to a DB and logged to a file. We created classes which were derived from the event arcs and event handlers. We we talked about the stack and the heap and the managed code. And we viewed the call stack, autos, locals, and heap 
in debug mode.